how you doing? Um, I just wanted to start posting a few more videos um, and show some of um, my projects and things that I've been working on lately but also um, initially just to start with I wanted to go through um, the setup of my workshop here in my garage um, so at the moment uh, the space hasn't really been utilized I'm, I'm renting this place so um, I need to be I've been using it as a storage area but whatever I set up in here has to be sort of um, semi-permanent like it needs to be able to be taken down and transported when one day I leave this place and I can't do anything no permanent fixtures and that sort of thing so that's a bit of a challenge um, the other challenge um, in setting up a workshop in this area is the age of the building and um, I suppose the um, GPOs and lighting and things is really really bad so that's a bit of a challenge as well I need to work out um, I've got some ideas for that um, and I've got some bits and pieces that I, I'm planning out and some things that I've just started working on and I thought I might as well grab the camera and, and give you a look at that. Initially this is the the workbench that I'm working with so it's quite small but I want to set it up as an electronics workbench and then once I clear all this out and get um, this finished and installed into the house I can put some other workbenches across here for some heavy duty stuff. This little tiny light fitting in the middle of the garage is the only light um, and there's no GPOs or power outlets anywhere. The only power outlet is this one in the corner for the whole garage, um, which is a real pain. I've actually put this little orange, it's an RCD, so it's a residual current device um, just for protection and safety because I run power tools off of this. But I strung this cable off and it's one of these little, um, it's like a power strip, but it's on an extension lead. So you've got these little outlets and I just ran them all the way down. There's, a, I think there's six or eight of them down the wall here. And then I break off um, power strips if I need to, or extension leads and things. And so this power strip here, which does um, the lights and um, the old school 90s stereo up here, um, that comes all off of this stuff. So I've got an Ethernet cable I'm going to pull through this wall here from the office, so I'll have um, Ethernet and power. Alright, I should apologise for the quality of the video. I'm just using my... Um my smartphone at the moment. I do have a really nice um, Canon um, HF G10 digital camera which I'll be using in future. Um, I just need to dig out the tripod and I've got some lights and things as well which I can use. But for now, um, this will do. So I'll show you um, what I've got planned for this bench back here. I'll just grab the shelves. So you can see these shelves here. I literally made these in like a couple of hours the other day. Um, it's made from aluminium extrusion and some 12mm plywood for the shelves and it's it's pretty lightweight but it's very sturdy so I'll just chuck this up here I'll just show you so I just cut that with a circular saw that's just some some plywood there you can see now as it sits there it is actually meant to go on that bench but it, it, it sort of shifts to the back um, I made them the, sh the shelves 35 centimeters deep which is about 14 inches um, that's so I had enough space for sort of like power supplies and scopes and lab equipment this is a function gen but you see that's sort of quite deep and then you need to have like power cables and power strips come off the back of that so I wanted to make it deep enough to house all of the equipment and things that I want to put on there what that means though is because this bench here is so shallow, it's literally um, 600 mil, which is 24 inches. Um, it only leaves like, you know, less than 12 inches, about, you know, 20, 25 centimeters of space. As you can see, this bottom shelf is quite low. Um, these are actually um, 25 centimeters between um, about 10 inches um, but it only leaves a very slim sort of bench space here and it's hard to get underneath so my idea is to extend these legs here lift this bottom shelf up to like a hutch system and have them the next shelf up here and then I can put my scopes and power supplies and things and I'll get a, a sort of decent chair and I can sit here and I've got access to the whole bench space underneath um, so that's the plan um, now, there is an issue with lighting um, because this light here isn't going to 
really be effective anymore. Um, so what I did is I went down to the hardware store, Bunnings, um, and I found these things. And I was looking for LED lighting, but to tell you the truth, unless you go online and um, get like strip lighting and things like that, it's really hit and miss, especially at the hardware stores around here. They sell very cheap and really bad, um, inefficient LEDs. Like I, they had some on display, and they were they were designed for sort of like um, shelving or kitchen cupboards and things, but it's really dim. Um, it's not good for working under. So I'm gonna give these a crack. Um, this is just a single fluoro, but it's a 14 watt. Apparently that's equivalent to 75 watt incandescent. Um, so I got two of these. For these here, they were very cheap. They're only like, I think about 20, 24 bucks each or something. So the idea is I'll have, you know, like one under there, and then further back another one, and hopefully then that's enough light to spill down. Um, we'll see how that goes. If it becomes an issue, I can add more. Um, they're cheap enough to do that, and they run off 240 volts. Um, the spare spare tubes are only about eight bucks, so it's a pretty effective system. Um, and 600 wide so they'll fit nicely under there. This bench by the way is 900 wide um, which is just shy of a meter, uh, just shy of a yard. I'm trying to do the imperial measurements. Um, the other thing I bought um, is I found this pegboard and it's powder coated steel. Um, you can see on the back there it's got these sort of like keyed mounting holes um, and I was thinking, oh, it would be really cool to, to have like pegboard at the back. So um, at the back of the hutch sort of shelf system, this is going to be like right at the back of the desk. And then I can um, hang all my, um, you know, like small pliers and soldering tools and my electronics tools and things like that. And so it just so happens that the width of this pegboard is 900. It's like perfect fit for my bench, so that's going to be really nice. Um, and then, along with that, I grab, you know, like a, a bag of, you know, single hooks just for holding uh, tools or things, and then I've got these sort of, like, I don't know if you can see that, they're sort of loops, so you can drop um, pliers and, um, you know, like wire strippers, and I can use it for that, so um, these are like, I don't know, like, maybe eight bucks or something or other for a bag of six here and a bag of ten hooks so it's all pretty cheap and affordable um, that's sort of the idea as well I thought I would um, just show you exactly what we got when I um, got these two little fluoro lights they're only 14 watts so let's have a look at what we got inside here what I'll also do is I'll wire one up and um, we can test this little light output. It's going to be hard to judge um, on video, but I can um, give you guys a fair assessment of that as well. All right. So. Some instructions on replacing the tube 240 volt 50 Hertz um, max wattage is for this model looks like there's a two times model this model is 14 watt t5 fluorescent tube so this is a Mercator this is an L 48141 and I've actually got the receipts here um, $27.90 so just shy of thirty dollars Australian, obviously. So um, a couple of mounting screws in the, the sockets, and looks like a shrouded um, terminal block there. Um, if you have a look, it also looks like it's got some um, some cable retention there, um, which is good. Um, some metal powder coated. Um, enclosure or chassis so it's got its earth pin there um, which is crimped and screwed down so it's all good um, I'll just spin this around so we can read this right so this is the ballast this is actually 220 to 240 
50 or 60 hertz, so 70 degrees max. Um, these things generally get like just warm to the touch, they don't get any more than that. Now, the instructions said that these caps, end caps, should just pull up, which they do. They're just plastic and just sort of like press fit. Um, and then, looks like that's metal. Okay, so this is just like a plastic. There you go, diffuser. Um, so it's smooth on the outside and it's got um, the corrugations on the inside, which is good because it means you can wipe it down easily. Um, it's like this sort of like translucent stuff, so we'll see how that goes. Looks alright. Good thing I open this too because it looks like a tube still in its cardboard protective packaging. So it's a tube, I'll just. Yeah, there you go. T5, 14 watt, 4000K. Um, so I have to look at my colour chart to see exactly what that means. I'm not up to speed with all the colour temperatures. I believe that's not too blue. I'm hoping it's sort of like a neutral white. I, I really don't like the sort of clinical blue lighting, it, like some of the old school LED lights. I prefer a warm white. Um, it's easier on my eyes and makes me feel a bit more comfortable when I'm working. So yeah, so that's it. It's all pretty basic stuff. There's your fittings. It's not sold, it's all just sort of crimped and press fit. I mean, it's all sort of standard fare. It's just powder coated for the reflector. And that's obviously where we can put our mounting holes there and there. So we've got two mounting positions. Um, and they'll be upside down and underneath this hutch area. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run a power lead into here. Um, and we'll fire it up and see what sort of light output we get. Alrighty, I think it's time to switch this thing on and give it a test run. See how bright, see how bright we are. Alright, um, so I'll just point it here for now. Turn it on. There we go. That's not too bad. Um, if I hold that up here, I'll turn off this um, overhead light that I've got. So you can sort of see the difference there. Obviously, um, I had both lights on there just then, but this overhead light was, um, it's one of these sort of um, incandescent replacements. So it's one of these sort of scrolled up uh, fluoros. This is a 24 watt bulb. The one, I'm, the one I've got here and I'm testing this baton one is 14 watt. So we can expect it to be a little bit dimmer, but that's actually throwing a pretty even light. I'm pretty impressed with that diffuser. I don't know if you can see, I don't want to blind you guys, but it's putting out a really even light. And with two of these, we should we should be brighter than the uh, overhead light. The problem with just having a single overhead light is the shadows that it casts. If you sort of got tools and things here, and you're throwing a dark shadow behind it or to the side of it, um, it, it can really make it difficult to see exactly what you're doing. So with two of these baton lights, like one on this side and one on this side. We should be able to eliminate a lot of those dark shadows and make visibility a lot better. So we'll see how that goes, but I, I've got a feeling that's going to be pretty good with two of those. We should have enough light. Um, cool. Thanks for watching.